When to use GraphQL over REST API, guys? Again, all of this, take it with a huge lump of salt. Here's the use case that I think fits REST versus GraphQL. You can argue that both of them can fit REST. You can do REST on all of them. You can do GraphQL on all of them, right? But the X here doesn't mean doesn't work. The X here means it's not, I would say, efficient or not applicable or not desirable, okay? The X doesn't mean cannot be implemented, okay? And with that said, let's jump into this. Public ad hoc API that you cannot predict how it will be used. And we kind of said that in a way or other while, while making this video, right guys? So if you're building an API then and you have no idea how their user interface will look like, right? Or you're predicting that API will be public or you're predicting the API, you're building the API in a way that is ad hoc to use. Ad hoc means you don't know how it will be used, right? Could be select star from join and do all kind of crazy thing, right? Like, like a SQL essentially like a SQL language, and that you cannot predict how it will be used, then I would prefer use GraphQL. I think GraphQL fits more here. You can build it with the rest. It's just the problem with that, you might get a client that needs certain operations. And here's the good thing about it. You can, if you implement it with rest, then the client will suffer because the client will be slow because it might need to do multiple run requests to, to, to satisfy a certain requirement, I would say, or result, right? But your backend is kind of solid, if you ask me, right? Because your backend is your backend. You designed it to be optimal, resource-based. But if you use GraphQL, then your client is fast because it sends one request, you give it back. But now you built contention in your server, so you better know what you're doing on the back end for that particular query. So it comes back to this complexity. Are, do you know what you're doing at the back end? Do you know what these queries are doing? Did you tune your database to give you the results back in the most efficient way possible? Right? All these questions. You gotta answer that. You might argue, well, Hussein, the same thing applies to REST, right? You can do a query to the resource, but it's a resource. You know what you'll be, you're building the REST API based on the schema. So you kind of know what you're building. If you don't know what you're building, if you don't know the API, it's, that's why API, building API is hard. I think it's very hard, right? Because the act of building an API is simple, but for the long haul, building an API that scales, building the API that works is hard, right? Because you have to think about all that stuff, guys. It's complex. You have to think about a lot of stuff. I mean, you can argue that, hey, let's just you build something and use it and try and error. And that's, that strategy works with a lot of people because you can just iterate over it. And GitHub, I think GitHub does that as well. They release version one, and if it doesn't work, they release version two, and they iterate over thing and then they shifted from rest completely to graphql looks like it now they have multiple apis but here's the thing specific and will design use cases api all right if you have a specific and well designed use cases and you know these use cases is gonna always be that nobody will ever query otherwise then definitely use a rest api because you know you know what the query will look like Build a REST API, get the benefit of caching this stuff, okay? Get the benefit of caching that stuff and just utilize the power of the simplicity of REST, right? Because you can get off the ground very quickly with REST compared to GraphQL because there is an infrastructure cost with GraphQL. It's not, it's not just deploy and run. It's not plug and play. So yeah, if you know what you're doing, if you know the specific well-designed use cases and all the possible entry points, then build a REST API. Build a nice REST API using Express or, or Node.js Express and all this fancy stuff. And, and you know the methods of get and post and delete, right? And simple API that serves one client. If you're building a simple API, if you're building a web page, a blog, if you're building a simple thing that is, you know, you have one client for it, one client, the web page that you're gonna build it, build a simple REST API or maybe a mobile application. Even that is better, right? You know, there's one mobile application that's gonna consume the API. Build the REST API. Why do you complicate yourself with GraphQL? Not saying you cannot use GraphQL. Definitely, your REST API is way easier, right? The cost comes back to the cost. Your man hours, right? Or woman hours. So you're spending the hours of things, just working with things, right, guys? Save your time. Enterprise API. 
So the New York Times is actually using GraphQL, guys. I don't know if you guys know, but they're using GraphQL and they have a very good use case for it because of all these articles, right? They, they're using Kafka and on top of that, they have one single GraphQL input interface to answer all sorts of questions. And that makes sense because especially for enterprise APIs, GraphQL makes perfect sense because you know there will be integration. You know a lot of people, a lot of other entities departments will start consuming your content maybe the public one day right so you you want to build a single interface that tie up everything else with you right and just by doing that the power of doing that gives you back the ability to integrate easy on new york times does does that with the graphql so that's a perfect use case. So that's another use case, right? If you're building an enterprise API for your, I don't know, entity, right? An organization that you know there's a lot of departments and there's a lot of interaction and hopefully a public API one day. If you know you're going to have a well-defined schema, GraphQL is also the way to go here, I think. So if you have a defined schema, GraphQL is, is also good here if you have a well-defined if you don't know the schema or you don't really care about the schema as a client again here guys I'm talking about the client not the back end you can have a back end schema that could be different right and I kind of some uh, it's it's a it's it's a disadvantage for the GraphQL because if you expose your back end schema to the to your front end then you give the attacker another option to kind of bring your database down if you think because they know the schema they know how it works so they know that if they are if they are good dbas they might know that oh querying these two fields is gonna blow up your database because you're gonna do a full table scan specifically you don't have indexes on those fields or something like that right then you can go through a path that gives gives you into contention where where you can do an, a very expensive query which then brings down your server and not necessary right you, because you can you can you they can do this query multiple times and do a denial of service attack on you. All right.